The courtroom was packed, the cameras were ready, but the trial was called off at the last minute when Fox News agreed to pay Dominion Voting Systems nearly $788 million to settle the 2021 defamation suit the company brought against the network. Now, the suit, as you well know by now, revolves around Fox's promotion and peddling of misinformation about the voting systems on air and online, including baseless and categorically untrue claims the company's machines were rigged to steal the 2020 presidential election. Now, as part of the settlement, Fox put out a statement read by Fox Media Buzz host Howard Kurtz in one of the very few mentions of the case on Fox's air. In it, the network makes this concession. We acknowledge the court's rulings finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. What you're not hearing there is them admitting to knowingly promoting lies about Dominion or issuing any kind of apology of any kind. The more than three quarter of a billion dollar settlement is the largest of its kind. But what, if anything, does it bode for Fox's future, for the media industry as a whole, all of that? Well, to discuss all of this, I'm joined by Elahe Izadi, media reporter and co-host of Post Reports, who I listen to every single day on The Washington Post. Welcome. And Daniel Rausch, lecturer, and law, a lecturer on law at, at Harvard. He focuses on technology, democracy, and First Amendment law. Busy day for you too. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Um, let's right. let's start with you, Elahe. What was your reaction when you heard that there was not going to be a trial, that there was going to be a settlement? Well, first of all, I was <laughs> kind of overseeing some of our live coverage, so <laughs> I was off to the races. But I have to tell you, you know, we knew all along that technically the two parties could reach a settlement at any point during the trial. We were expecting the jury to have been selected and opening statements to have begun on Monday. That was delayed by a day. We got indication that that was to allow both parties to maybe reach a last minute settlement. Our reporting at the time didn't indicate that they were anywhere near that. And so all of us were anticipating that, you know, after the jury was selected on Tuesday, they went to lunch and opening statements one hour later. And as that delay went on, I mean, this really represents a stunning conclusion to a two year long legal battle. Yeah, Daniel, you know, it's it's always <laughs> I don't want to say this out loud, but there's a part of me who's like, who am I supposed to be rooting for here mm. from a media <laughs> standpoint? Obviously, Fox lied. They did terrible things. Um, the line between I'm an opinion commentator, if I come up with an opinion based on what I think the facts are and I'm wrong, um, does that make me open to a lawsuit? Not obviously of this size. But what was the First Amendment part of this that made it a little bit more complicated than just to say, liars, you're wrong? <laughs> Well, first of all, Sue, thank you so much for having me on this evening. It's, it's wonderful to be here, and I feel like defamation law is having its moment in the sun. <laughs> um, and what it comes down to is a very famous, very prominent Supreme Court case, which was New York Times v. Sullivan, uh, came out at the height of the civil rights movement and was seen as a major victory for free speech. And it set very, very high bars and hurdles for any defamation plaintiff to surmount before they can successfully sue the press. They have to essentially show not only that there was uh, a false opinion or uh, a mean opinion or, or even a lie or even a negligent lie, they need to show actual malice. And I think we saw an attempt to make this proof in some of the really jaw-dropping discovery that we saw throughout this case. Yeah, Elahe, I gotta tell you, I have a lot of friends uh, in the law world who say to me, don't ever text anything. Like, what, what <laughs> do not text anything, do not- They're smart. <laughs> do not DM anything. You know, if you're gonna have a conversation about something, have a conversation. I have, I have coworkers who, you know, will not say anything unless they make sure phones are on like the other side <laughs> of the room. And I'm now understanding that. But, you know, th this, this recklessness that Fox engaged in on the air <laughs> and then behind the scenes I mean I'm surprised they didn't end up having that Dominion didn't end up with more money well you know as we saw through the discovery process I mean this is really why like a lot of media companies don't even want to go to trial you know it's even it's rare for a defamation lawsuit against a media company to get to trial which it technically did in this case and part of the reason, in addition to, you know, what was wonderfully explained is this high standard and high legal bar that plaintiffs have to surpass when suing, 
that discovery happens that precisely all these internal communications, text messages, emails, they become, they could become part of the public record. And in this case, a lot, a trove of internal documentation from Fox News was made public. And now we, the public, get this unprecedented view into the inner workings of a very powerful media company that's also quite a force within Republican politics as well. And so I don't know what the content of your emails and text messages <laughs> are, but in this case, some of the things that we saw were hosts like Tucker Carlson, who is hugely popular, gets lots of big ratings, saying privately that he thought Sidney Powell, this attorney aligned with Trump, that she was lying. Um, he also said things about Donald Trump saying he hates him and, you know, provided us a sense of what did people privately say, even though they were defending the president in public on their programs. I mean, really, that's why this case was so closely watched, not just for the defamation claim that was going to be hammered out in the courtroom, but also for some of these ancillary reasons as well. Daniel, yeah. as Elahi says, rarely do these cases go to trial because either the insurance company that that is got the libel insurance for the publication or for the media company wants to settle, mm. uh, or they've got deep pockets and they don't want people to know their business. But had this gone to trial, could it have changed, and has it changed, even though it's a settlement, has it changed the way people view libel and slander lawsuits and the First Amendment when it comes to media? Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful question. I think that... Um, the, the, the question to ask in some sense is, is not just what this lawsuit has done to change and what trial would have done, which I think would have been quite dramatic. I think you would have seen Tucker Carlson and Rupert Murdoch taking the stand under oath. Uh, you know, I always say uh, courtrooms are where conspiracy theories go to die. Everyone's right. sworn in. Uh, so it would have been a, a very dramatic moment. But, but if you look at the broader trend toward defamation suits, I think that has real potential to change the media landscape. I know that uh, Elahe uh, reported, I think just today, about the Smartmatic suit mm -hmm. and yep. how there's a whole slew of similar lawsuits, certainly from uh, Wandrea Moss, the Georgia elections worker who was slandered and has gone after many of these similar defamers. And so I think combined, those lawsuits have great potential to change the media landscape. And Eli, as Daniel's mentioning the uh, Smartmatic uh, case, uh, that's next on the dock for Fox News. That's a second major defamation lawsuit. What's that lawsuit about? Yeah, so that claim, which was also a lawsuit filed in 2021 around the same time within a span of months as the Dominion lawsuit, that was a $2.7 billion lawsuit. Smartmatic is, is claiming that as its damages. That case, a judge in New York in February allowed it to proceed. We're still quite a ways away from a trial. Fox spokesperson told us that it would be 2025 is when they're eyeing this. I think, you know, or, and it also, sorry, just if you look at what they're claiming, it's similar sort of things as what was said about Dominion was also said on air about Smartmatic. Now they're two different companies and so the financials of these two different companies will become a relevant component of this. I have to say Fox's defense, especially in the days leading up to the trial, they were very aggressive in, in saying the Dominion claim of $1.6 billion was overinflated. And so I will imagine that that's also going to play a part. But if I could, on the First Amendment piece, what's so fascinating about this particular case, the Dominion case, was that the judge had already ruled in a pretrial hearing that Fox's lawyers could not argue that the First Amendment was a defense for libelous speech. And so even though Fox, in the lead up to the trial, kept arguing that it was a First Amendment case and that the underlying principles of actual malice have to do with First Amendment, in the courtroom, they were very limited in what they could have argued. I don't know what's going to take place with the Smartmatic case, but we're already receiving indication that they're saying that this is an attempt to chill free speech. Yeah, and Daniel, I mean, I know you want to build off that, but you know, I always thought Fox would have been better off just saying it's entertainment, it's satire, <laughs> it's not even news. I mean, what what's what's their next defense going to be on this? I imagine they're going to be in the same position. Yeah, it it, it may play out in a in a quite similar way. Um, and one, uh, you know. I think there's almost a consensus evolving that this might be the least satisfying $800 million payout in American <laughs> history. I think if you look at uh, the catharsis that people hoped to come from this, it didn't. And, and part of why it didn't is I think that um, for Fox, which had a $4 billion cash surplus on hand, uh, according to the latest information, 
this might become cost of doing business. And so mm -hmm. you might see them cut a similarly very large check in Smartmatic, and you may not see uh, dramatic change there there either. Elijah, it's, it's amazing to me that there doesn't seem to be on air on Fox you know, we sh I think we showed the only <laughs> the only uh, 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 point that it was made. I mean, I, 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 when I'm at work at my other job, we have screens everywhere, and I don't ever see them talking about it. I mean, are, are they just going to continue to live in this world where this major news story, which impacts all media, uh, just didn't happen? Well, it's interesting you bring that up. Actually, a few hours ago, I just published a piece sort of reviewing some of how the coverage on Fox itself of the Dominion case. You did air a little bit of it. Um, I found a handful of instances in which the case was mentioned. It, the broad contours of it were described. Um, only one instance I found in which the actual settlement amount was set on air. It was set on air once and attributed to the Wall Street Journal. Yes. By and large, this story is dominated all of its competitors on, on television and across newspaper. I mean, it was on the front page of almost every major newspaper in the country today. And it was mentioned here and there on Fox, but th that's the big question on my mind. Like, Fox's most loyal viewers, are they aware that this case even existed or some of the deeper concepts related to it? Are, are they aware that the judge ruled from the beginning, you know, two, three weeks ago that they couldn't argue in court that there was any veracity, any possibility of veracity to these election fraud claims? Um, and more importantly, as you mentioned, there's no apology. There's no retraction on air. That was not part of the terms of the settlement, according to two sources close to the network who spoke to a colleague of mine. Um, and so will their viewers know the truth of the matter, which is that the election was not stolen and that Dominion voting machines had nothing to do with any such thing? What's the lesson here? What's your lesson plan? When you're, when you're teaching <laughs> this case, what's, what's the takeaway? Uh, I think, I think the, the, the takeaway is stay tuned. And I think the big takeaway might come in two or three years, depending on what the Supreme Court ultimately does with New York Times v. Sullivan. I think there's a real sense that a lot of the rules that worked in the time of Walter Cronkite don't work as well in the time of Pizzagate and Stop the Steal. Oh, and so uh, my lesson plan may shift very dramatically in the next two or three years, I think. You know, what makes my head explode about this, Elahe, as we wrap, wrap up here, is that I'm always arguing that in the media, when we make a mistake, we have to put a retraction. We have to say we made the mistake. Like, there's all sorts of people. Plumbers make mistakes all the time, and they don't have to say that they made a mistake. And that we're basically doing our best to tell the truth. And then this happens, which we knew they were doing. And, um, but the people who are watching, the, watching Fox don't seem to know that their suspicions about the rest of us are, are right under their nose they were being lied to. Well, and it also just sort of speaks to the media bubbles that so many people operate in, like the days of Walter Cron Cronkite are gone in many ways, and that's one of them. You know, a lot of people consume their news from um, outlets that are already aligned with their worldview and providing a particular skewed perspective. And so if we're not all consuming the same sort of facts and information, then that's an issue for our entire democracy, not just for media law. Well, we'll leave it there. I appreciate both of you, Elahe Izade and Daniel Rodgers. Roush, thank you so much for joining me. Appreciate your expertise and talking about this. We'll rejoin for the next one, okay? The next lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Sounds like a plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you.